Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So every year, Jim entered the state lottery, hoping to win. He never did. One day, after praying vigorously and hoping for God's message, he headed out to the state fair. A flash of lightning struck him as he was passing by Nadine's carnival booth. She was bending over and he saw she was not wearing panties. He could see the number seven written on each of her butt cheeks. He bet on 77 as he thought God had given him a sign. He lost again. The winning number was 707. Moral of the story, never underestimate the importance of arseholes in your life. <laughs> so two nuns were in back of the convent smoking cigarettes when one said, it's bad enough that we have to sneak out here to smoke, but it really is a problem getting rid of the cigarette butts so that Mother Superior doesn't find them. The second nun said, I found a marvelous invention called the condom, which works really well for this problem. You just open the packet up, take out the condom, and put the cigarette butt in, roll it up, and dispose of it all later. The first nun was quite impressed and asked where she could find them. You get them at the drugstore, sister. Just go and ask the pharmacist for them. The next day, the good sister went to the drugstore and walked up to the counter. Good morning, sister, said the pharmacist. What can I do for you today? I'd like some condoms, please, said the nun. The pharmacist was a little taken aback but recovered soon enough and asked, How many boxes would you like? There are twelve to a box. I'll take six boxes that should last about a week, said the nun. The pharmacist was truly flabbergasted by this time and was almost afraid to ask any more questions, but his professionalism prevailed and he asked in a clear voice, Sister, what size condoms would you like? We have large, extra large, and the big liar size. The sister thought for a minute and finally said, I'm not certain. Perhaps you could recommend a good size for a camel? The pharmacist fainted. <laughs> so when I was about nine years old, I tagged along with my father to the somber funeral of one of his friends. Being a curious and innocent child, I didn't know the deceased person at all. As I stood in the corner, trying to make sense of the solemn atmosphere, a mysterious stranger approached me. He looked me straight in the eyes and said, Enjoy life, be happy, because time flies. And then, as if to seal his words with a touch, he gently passed his hand over my head. With that, he vanished into the crowd leaving me bewildered and pondering his cryptic message. After the service, my father led me to the coffin to pay our respects to the departed soul. But, to my utter horror, I saw that the man lying in the coffin was none other than the very same man who had spoken to me just moments ago. This chilling experience haunted me for many years. I suffered from nightmares and I couldn't bear to be alone. I had to sleep with a nightlight, and I sought help from numerous psychologists to overcome my fears. As I grew older, the nightmares became less frequent, but they never quite disappeared. However, one day, years later, I stumbled upon an astonishing discovery that completely changed my life. The dead bastard had a twin. <laughs> So a rabbit walks into a grocery store. He bangs his paws on the counter and yells, a pound of carrots. The shopkeeper says, I'll get you the carrots, but please don't bang your paws on the counter. The rabbit takes the carrots and leaves. The next day he comes back and again bangs his paws on the counter and yells, a pound of carrots. This time the shopkeeper is more annoyed. I'll get you the carrots, he says, but do not bang your paws on the counter. You are leaving scratch marks. 
The rabbit takes the carrots and leaves. The next day, he comes back and again bangs his paws on the counter and yells, a pound of carrots. Now the shopkeeper is mad. Listen, he says, I'll get you the carrots, but if you do that one more time, I'm going to nail your paws to the counter. The rabbit takes the carrots and leaves. The next day he comes back. This time, he politely asks, do you have nails? This is a grocery store, not a hardware store. The shopkeeper replies, why would we sell nails? In that case, says the rabbit, while banging his paws on the counter, a pound of carrots. <laughs> so one day, in a classroom, a teacher dedicated to instilling good manners in her students posed a question to test their etiquette. She asked, Michael, if you were on a date having dinner with a nice young lady, how would you tell her that you have to go to the bathroom? Michael, without much thought, replied, just a minute, I have to go pee. The teacher shook her head and explained, that would be rude and impolite. She then turned to Sherman and inquired, what about you, Sherman? How would you say it? Sherman, taking a moment to consider his answer, said, I am sorry, but I really need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. The teacher nodded, but added, it's still not very nice to say the word bathroom at the dinner table. She then looked at the youngest student, Johnny, and challenged him. Johnny, can you use your brain for once and show us your good manners? Johnny, with a sly smile, responded, I would say, darling, may I please be excused for a moment? I have to shake hands with a very dear friend of mine, whom I hope to introduce to you after dinner. The teacher fainted. <laughs> so a man is watching a movie on television with his wife. The wife says, do you think that Angelina Jolie is very attractive? The man thinks about it, being careful to not to jump to the answer too soon. Yeah, I guess you can say she is. They go back to watching the film. The guy is comforted that nothing came of that loaded question. Six years later, the same couple are having breakfast. The man, sitting at the kitchen table, asks, Can I have another egg? The wife, standing at the stove, turns and angrily yells, Why don't you ask Angelina Jolie to make you your egg if she's so bloody beautiful? <laughs> So once upon a time, there was a man named Bill, who, despite being moderately successful in his career, found himself grappling with a peculiar problem as he aged. He began to suffer from excruciating headaches that not only affected his personal hygiene, but also took a toll on his love life. Desperate for a solution, Bill sought the help of various specialists, until one day, he finally met a doctor who could provide an answer. The doctor explained to Bill that he had a rare condition in which his testicles pressed against the base of his spine, causing immense pressure and, consequently, the unbearable headaches. The only way to relieve this pressure was to undergo a castration. Bill was understandably devastated by the news, but decided he had no choice but to go through with the operation. After the surgery, Bill felt as though a fog had lifted from his mind, but he couldn't help feeling incomplete. As he walked down the street, he realized that this could be an opportunity for a fresh start. He decided to treat himself to a new suit and entered a men's clothing store. The salesman, with a keen eye, sized him up and said, Let's see, size 44 long? Bill laughed and replied, That's right. How did you know? It's my job, salesman replied with a smile. Bill tried on the suit, and it fit perfectly. The salesman then suggested a new shirt, and Bill, feeling confident, agreed. The salesman, once again displaying his expertise, said, Let's see, 34 sleeve and 16 and a half neck. Bill was astonished. That's right. 
How did you know? It's my job, salesman said once more. Bill tried on the shirt, and it fit like a glove. Encouraged by this success, he decided to buy new shoes as well. The salesman, without missing a beat, said, Let's see, nine and a half. Bill was amazed. That's right. How did you know? It's my job, the salesman repeated. Bill slipped on the shoes and found that they were a perfect match. Feeling bold, Bill agreed to the salesman's suggestion of new underwear. The salesman stepped back, took a look at Bill's waist and said, Let's see, size 36. Bill laughed and said, No, I've worn size 34 since I was 18 years old. The salesman shook his head in disbelief. You can't possibly wear a size 34. It would press your testicles up against the base of your spine and give you one hell of a headache. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs>